Welcome to Storytime with Papa Henry. We are beginning a new book today. It is called Captain Daly's Crew and the Long-Eared Taxi Cab by Craig Massey. The old crew is back with a new adventure. Chapter 1. Where's the Long-Eared Taxi Cab? I'm sure glad Pudge invited us up here for our vacation, Slim shouted above the slap of water against the prow of the red and white motorboat. I can see how this body of water got its name, Crooked Finger Lake. It's long and sort of skinny, and just about as crooked as... Chuck paused a moment, then grinned. As a crooked finger. How much farther do we have to go, Captain Daly? I asked. The captain dug a square of paper from his shirt pocket and glanced at Pudge's clumsily drawn directions. After studying it a moment, he said, uh, Well, if, if this map is accurate, uh, we should spot Pudge's uncle's lodge from a point just opposite those chimney-like rocks over there. The captain nodded toward gray cliffs breaking out from the wall of balsam fir. A week before, Pudge had left Shadyville to visit his relatives. Within two days, we had a scritchy, scratchy letter from him, written with a pen point that was probably the first one ever invented. I guess the best thing to do is to pass along the whole letter, and you'll get the idea. Dear gang, jumping pumpkin seeds, what a place! Sunfish, perch, and rock bass almost beg to be caught. Northern pike and bass don't beg so hard, but they're here too. The second day I arrived, Aunt Lottie caught me moping on the dock and asked me what was wrong. I told her the truth. I told her I missed my gang back home. And she right up and says, how many be in your gang? And I says, four others. Counting you in, Captain Daly. Right off, she says, march into the house, young man. Write them a letter and tell them to get up here quick. We've got lots of room and lots of food. And they're welcome. And I don't want a moping boy hanging around my diggings. So gang, pack your duds and come a-hustling. Bring blankets. It gets cold up here. I'll draw a map showing you the way from Bear Valley Village on the eastern end of the lake. Of course you'll have to drive that far. But seeing as how there's no roads allowed on the north rim of the lake, you'll have to hire a motorboat and come the rest of the way. Don't let me down, gang. You're a fellow Christian. Pudge. I guess you could tell how good we felt about the invitation, especially when our folks gave permission and Captain Daly agreed to go. The boat cut a furrow in the tranquil water as we moved toward the base of the rock formation. On the map, Pudge had marked a dotted line from that point to the far shore. Above the dotted line, he had scrawled, If you sight your eyes along this line, you'll see the lodge. And sure enough, we did. There it is, Slim sang out. Wow, it's a log cabin. And big, Chuck added. And look at the size of that dock. It's a honey, I added. There was no doubt about us being right. For within moments after we saw the building, our roly-poly pal bounced out on the dock and jumped up and down, flailing his arms like a chicken trying to fly. The purring boat skimmed closer, and we could hear Pudge bellowing. Hi, Captain Daly! Hi, Slim! Hi, Gary! Gary's my name. Hi, Chuck! We coursed our greetings back across the swiftly closing gap. Then Slim snorted. Jumping pumpkin seeds, as Pudge would say. What in the world's hanging between those two trees? I followed Slim's long piano fingers piano player's finger, and saw a battered 10-foot square of canvas. It was just hanging from a length of rope tied to two towering maple trees. On the faded gray material, someone had splotched the sign in white paint, reading, Stop here. Hire a long-eared taxi cab. Wonder Lost Lake. Pudge Hartman, taxi driver. Good night. The kid's in business, Chuck said. 
Who ever heard of a long-eared taxi cab? I ejected. It's probably some prank he's pulling on us, Chuck warned. Captain Daly cut the speed of the boat and let the motor just barely idle us to the dock. I tossed a length of rope. Pudge caught it, tied the slick little craft securely, and then we clambered out, <clears throat> pumping Pudge's hand in greeting. As soon as things quieted down a bit, I piped up. Hey, what's that sign mean? Pudge's jowly face spread into a grin of complete contentment. I am in business, men. Monkey business? Slim countered. No siree, I've made $18 in three days with my little old long-eared taxi cab. Long-eared taxi cab? What's that? I didn't even know a road ran around this side of the lake, Chuck questioned. It doesn't, Pudge snapped with joy. But I've got a taxi. And he let his voice go hillbilly style. That ain't a bother by trees, nor stones, nor nothing. We were ready to fire more questions, but two middle-aged folks ambled down from the log cabin. Pudge introduced them as his Uncle Zachary and Aunt Lottie Hartman. They both looked like big additions of Pudge, roundish with blue eyes and with an old-fashioned happiness in their faces. Even before you take your bags from the boats, folks, you're coming up for dinner. It's steaming hot and awaiting to be at. Near the close of the meal, Captain Daly spoke up. You mean, Pudge, you actually have a taxi cab? Yes, sir, Captain. A long-eared taxi cab. He glanced at the clock over the stone mantelpiece and exploded. Jumping pumpkin seeds! I'll have to hurry. There are three folks coming over from Bear Valley Village, and they've hired my long-eared taxi cab for the afternoon. Pudge gobbled the last of his pie and said, You fellows might as well come along. It's the keenest of keen trips up the Wanderlust Lake. After we'd taken our bags and duffel to the cabin, cabin, Pudge led us to a long sloping trail leading from the lake northward through solid forest. A huge sign at the base of the trail stated that the area was a state forest. Underneath, it listed the points of interest, with arrows pointing up the trail. Wonderlost Lake, 2 miles. Twin Peak Mountain, 12 miles. Indian Lookout, 12 miles. Fire Tower, 13 miles. Rattlesnake Valley, 6 miles. Boy, even that sign looks exciting, Slim said. You've never seen wilder country, I'll guarantee that, Pudge told us. And there are animals galore, and birds, and fishing. Look, you refugee from an elephant herd, there's not a car in the world that could climb that trail. Look at those rocks. It would be totally impossible for any four-wheeled vehicle to crawl even 50 feet. The long-eared taxi cab never fails, Pudge countered. We would have pushed more questions, but just then the put 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 of an outdoor outboard motorboat caught our attention. My customers, Pudge exclaimed. I guess I'll have to drive my taxi cab up. You fellows wait here. The next chapter is called The Taxi Stalls. Hmm. I wonder what this taxi cab is. We'll have to find out next time.